a lot of you bought the fob creative icon too because of the ginormous decorative stitches that are built in. Fof has always been known for their decorative stitches that are ginormous. I'm gonna show you some of the bigger ones that are built into this machine. And some of the tricks to be aware of when you start to sew them. Now again, these are ready to stitch. Feed dogs up, regular presser foot. Well, the one that it recommends, which is number eight, I'm gonna talk about. And you can just stitch out rows of these. We're also gonna talk about a little stabilizer, but don't forget, you can always bring these over into the embroidery side and embroider them out and combine those in some of the embroidery features like putting them in a circle or any shape and also making them different sizes there. But it is so nice just to have your sewing machine set up, find a stitch, stitch it out, and away you go. So these maxi stitches, there's actually an entire menu just for these stitches. But just because they're not in the maxi stitch menu doesn't mean that you don't have stitches that are ginormous throughout this machine. So for example, I'm in the satin stitch menu up here at the top and have found that some of these stitches when selected are bigger. Some are smaller and then you scroll down and then they get bigger and bigger. By the way, I love these with a twin needle. That's one of my favorite things to do with maxi stitches, but you kind of stitch them out and really see how pretty they are. Now, if you can't see them just because of this being in the way or this being open, remember you can always touch the stitch menu um, button, collapse that area and you can see it right down the middle. But sometimes I'm looking for a specific stitch, maybe, which one was it that I was looking for? So this is in my way. Remember, if you touch any of the four little vertical hash marks, you can move that box out of the way. So sometimes I'll do something like this because then I can see those stitches just like this as I touch them. So where are those maxi stitches? You're gonna find them in the number five decorative stitch menu and Number 5.4, these are the ones you're kind of seeing over here. Now, I remember as I started stitching them out and as I picked them, I, a few times I didn't realize how long one repeat was. So yes, it is that long on screen, but what is it by number? Go into your edit stitch menu and you'll see right here what the length of one repeat is. For example, this one's 90 millimeters long and there are some other ones that are even longer that um, this one. This one is the one that I got started stitching and I ran because I was going this way with the fabric <laughs> and this was only like six inches wide. I ran out of real estate and ran off the road. Um, it's 162 uh, millimeter as a repeat. So this doesn't even show the whole stitch because as you can see, when you come down here, where it actually starts to repeat, it's way at the bottom. See the two little things at the top? They don't start again until, there we go. That is about seven inches, oh my gosh. So I, I quickly realized I had to be a little bit more observant with the stitch I was picking and where I was putting it. And that's why it had to go vertical on my stitch book here. Remember, this is your stitch book. If it goes sideways or doesn't fit exactly where it was, it's all about stitching them out and seeing how pretty they look once you are stitching them. Okay, so as you have one of these up, one of the things that we should take a look at is number one, the foot recommendation, number eight. So number eight is not a dual feed foot, so make sure your dual feed is not engaged. It is very similar to your 2A foot, but it is bigger yet. And so there's more room for it to kind of guide across all the layers as you go. So just make sure that you don't get these confused, that if it says eight, you need to go up to the big, big boy and stitch with this foot also has lots of markings and I do use those to help keep it going straight because as your fabric floats to the left and then floats to the right as it's stitching out this stitch you need to kind of have a way to keep it all lined up so that 
foot is ideal. Sometimes I do draw some lines on my fabric, or if I'm following along, I can kind of guide the fabric here along some of the markings on the throat plate once we start stitching. But definitely take a line look of how to stitch these out, and I'm gonna give you a quick little preview of what it looks like to see these stitched out in action. Stabilizer, make sure you have enough stabilizer. I like a nice kind of crisp tear away. Uh, that is gonna be ideal for uh, stitching, it, especially if you're working on cotton fabrics or you're adding these to a sashing and then you're gonna sew the sashing into the quilt. Oh my gosh, looks beautiful when you do it that way. Just a note, if you wanna combine these stitches together, you can open up the sequence creator and build a new pattern by going in and selecting maxi stitch to stitch with maxi stitch. So if I go in, I'm gonna do 4.5 and if I was to hook up stitch number three and stitch number six, you can see what they look like all lined up ready to stitch, how they're gonna connect. You might look at which ones connect at the same spot so they don't have like a little jig in the middle. And then when you go to touch okay, you're gonna see this stitch, and here let's minimize this so we can see it, how it's gonna look. There's a little overlap right here as it starts um, the second repeat, but that is so pretty. And now it's a whole new stitch. So just remember some of these stitches combined with each other are gonna give you even more options for decorative stitches. So the key for successful maxi stitches is number one, some type of visual guide. I'm gonna just visually keep my eye paralleled from the foot to the edge of the fabric. I'm also not holding or resisting this. If anything, I'm just barely like holding this up. And if I see that it's kind of moving off to this, off where it's parallel, I'm gonna just very so, oh so slightly just adjust it with my fingers and keep that going straight. So you don't wanna ever like resist or push, just go ahead and keep it within the, maybe the line you're stitching it on and you can definitely see how easy it is to keep it going. I, I do know that the key is your stabilizer, having the right stabilizer, and then also just some type of visual guide. I cannot sew straight without something to watch, so that is something that doesn't get better just because you're making stitches that go side to side. But I'm gonna just go ahead. I, you did notice that I used the start stop button to start. And then again, if you need to slow your machine down over on the side, you can touch and slide that down. When I'm ready to have it in, touch the scissor button one time. And that means that it'll just finish the pattern and it will uh, lock it off at the end. If you're looking for more ways to use your decorative stitches on the sewing side of your machine, I highly recommend that you take a look at our Stitching Cosmos online course, where we use exclusively all sewing techniques, all decorative stitches. You're gonna be pretty much required to sew out your stitch book so you can really be able to use every stitch that's in your machine right at your fingertips. So we'll have links below this YouTube video where you can check that out.